Can you please stop bothering my kid? Sorry. Arthur, I have some bad news for you. <laughs> this is the last time we'll be meeting. You don't listen, do you? You just ask the same questions every week. How's your job? Are you having any negative thoughts? All I have are negative thoughts. And finally, in a world where everyone thinks they can do my job, check out this guy. When I was a little boy and told people I was going to be a comedian, everyone laughed at me. Well, no one's laughing now. You can say that again, pal. <laughs> Isn't it? For my whole life, I didn't know if I even really existed. But I do. And people are starting to notice. You think this is funny? <laughs> is this a joke to you? <laughs> Murray, one small thing. Yeah. When you bring me out, can you introduce me as Joker? Send in the clowns. God damn. Look, if you weren't already convinced by the first trailer that this movie is going to be incredible, then this had to have done it because they completely knocked it out of the ballpark with this final trailer. I respect how Todd Phillips just released two trailers and that's it. You know, there was little pictures that you could find on Google and things like that, but he had nothing to do with that, you know. But, uh, you know, the MCU, for instance, they, they I feel like they released too much, you know, and uh, with clips and things, and then, and then you kind of get uh, spoiled for things that are going to happen in the movie. But um, with this, you know, it could go in any any direction, really. You know, you could kind of tell by the trailer what's going to happen. But at the same time, it's tough to make predictions. So back in April, I made a video reacting to the first trailer. And now I'm reacting to the second one. And if you didn't see my first one, the main reason I'm doing these reaction videos for this movie specifically, because I don't do it with anything else, but I'm doing it for this one because I'm an extra in the movie. If you didn't watch my other video, I mentioned it. And, like I said, it's not a big role, but this is the picture I found on Google. Uh, it's me, and it's a, it, it's been tough trying to convince people. Look, if I don't need to lie about stuff like that, okay? I even in IGN made a post recently about the movie, and I thought it would be cool to, to show the picture. Be like, hey guys, this is actually me. I worked with the guy, really cool. This is me, but I have this mask on, as you can see. But, you know... A good amount of people, and maybe like 90% of the comments were like, oh, that's awesome, that's really cool. But then you have people that were like, oh, like why should we believe you, that you're bullshitting, you're a, you're a liar. But I, I don't need to go out of my way to do that. I don't need to lie to people on fucking IGN to get attention, you know what I mean? Like, I just figured it would be cool and that people would, um, you know, just enjoy the fact and respect it. You know, people were asking me questions, and as much as I want to tell everyone, like, what I saw and, like, how things are going to play out, um, I can't, you know, first of all, I'll get sued, and second of all, who wants to be spoiled, you know? So I'm not going to make any predictions, because if I were to, it's going to just give too much away. After Heath Ledger's phenomenal performance, there were a lot of shoes to fill for who would play the next Joker. And then we got Jared Leto in Suicide Squad, but we don't really like to talk about that much, do we? James Gunn, please do it right in the remake. Or should I say redo? And now it's 2019 and Joaquin Phoenix is the Joker we never knew we needed. Yes, every Joker is insane. But with Joaquin Phoenix, what's so creepy about his laugh is how he could go from laughing to just a blank expression. Because 
after all the bullshit he's dealt with in his life, he literally feels nothing anymore, you know? His psychiatrist, who was probably the last person that could have changed this man's life around before he became the Joker, and she goes ahead and tells him that this is going to be the last time that we'll be meeting because he's not making any progress and has the audacity to always ask him every week if he's having any negative thoughts, and he simply replies... You don't listen, because I always have negative thoughts. If you didn't already know, this movie is rated R. A lot of people were hoping it was going to be that, because you know, PG-13 just wouldn't sell it enough, you know what I mean? When it's rated R, it could be more realistic and more genuine, especially for a story about the Joker, you know, because we all know how sick he is, and I feel like in order for Joaquin Phoenix to do the Joker justice... I mean, not that, you know, not that the other ones couldn't, like Heath Ledger and Jack Nich Nicholson. Um, I just feel like now we could finally see the Joker in his true light, in live-action form. Personally, I hope he kills that bitch who was on the train in the beginning of the trailer and adopts that little boy and turns him into a Joker Jr. Because at least he could make him laugh, but according to her, fun and laughter is completely frowned upon. Robert De Niro's in this movie. His character is just another asshole. Shocker. Zazie Beetz is in the movie. She played Domino in Deadpool 2. And she must be the Joker's uh, girlfriend or something. And she's just cute as hell. If it wasn't already clear, though, Thomas Wayne is going to be the main protagonist, right? You know, he's the rich prick. And the Joker stands up for us, the poor, you know? That's why me, like the extras... People with the clown mask and makeup, we love this guy and we idolize him because we feel like he's there for us and he speaks for us. I really love this quote, every villain is a hero in his own mind, right? So this story, this movie is going to be a perfect example of that, especially since it's an origin movie. You're going to be rooting for the Joker the whole time because you're going to see his downfalls in the beginning and you're going to see his rise at the end. And it's why I really love this poster. You know, a lot of people just say, oh, whatever, it's just him on stairs and he's dancing. But you got to figure, you know, the, the angle of it too. Stairs show dominance, especially since he's higher up. It shows power. It shows leadership. The first Rocky movie is a perfect example. You know, during his training, he's constantly running up the stairs. And then they finally show him making it to the top, looking over to the city, you know, with his hands up in the air like this. It just shows... Like I said, you know, power, right? It just shows strength. And, you know, the way he looks over Philadelphia like that. Kind of just saying, you know what, this is my city. And in this case, the city of Gotham is under new management by the one and only Joker. And there's no Batman to stop him because he's not even in high school yet. October 4th, it's right around the corner. And he can't come any sooner. I can't wait any longer. I'm going to make sure to see a day of, opening night. Or at least the same weekend. And make sure you guys look out for me in the movie. I'm one of the only people wearing green pants. And at some point later on, I'm wearing a green leather jacket. It's going to be hard not to see me. Hopefully. We'll see. But anyway, guys. Thank you for watching. This is Vlogs with Fitz. Good night.